Right, I had a band and um, we were called the oh, okay, we were called the Millionaires. It's an embarrassing name, but yeah, we were looking for a record deal. And we, he was in uh, at a uh, uh, the studio in uh, Holloway Road, North London, up on the third floor, and um, we went. And he had lots of hits. You know, he worked for IBC. He recorded Lonnie Donegan's hits. Oh, everybody, Shirley Bassey. Anyway, um, we went there and uh, we did an audition, and he he signed us, and we made a record called um, Wishing Well. Um, I used to sing with my brother and I used to play guitar and bass and things and um, yeah it went to number 12 in the charts and that was really good but then it was soon after that that um, well he, he committed suicide which was really sad so uh, that was the end of our record career so <laughs> but, so, but I love music and I used to have a little recording studio anyway um, and I managed to find a derelict building in New Compton Street which is just off Charing Cross Road which is sort of prime area, it's just by Soho. Spent hours, burnt the midnight oil for months and got it open and it's, it did quite well, but it, it wasn't enough to pay the, the people. So um, I saw, I, there's a shop upstairs and I put my equipment, I had some box equipment and put it all in the shop and it sold the first day. What I didn't realise was that it was along Charing Cross Road was the walkway for all the bands as all the music shops and we were just on the corner, it was just fortunate and I thought well that's great and so I started buying second hand equipment and selling it. In the end uh, we decided to build our own equipment. Um, my base background was in electronics anyway um, and so we, that's, that's how it all started. We painted the shop orange, um, got in trouble with the council, neighbours um, but I stuck it out and because in those days, you know, all the cars were black and all the fronts of shops were brown. Out the front of our shop was a dirty brown. It was horrible. And, um, and we painted luminous orange. And um, <laughs> it caused, I didn't think it caused that much trouble. But anyway, um, we got over that. Um, we started in September 68, 1968. And by about 1970, um, we had people, even John Lennon um, from the Beatles, Paul Kossoff, um, Mark Bolan, oh, um, Gary Moore, they all come in the shop and just jam and play. And I think the other shops in those days, you know, they were suited sales with ties and, um, yeah, they, um, they came to our shop and um, we just did tremendous business. And we were really the happening shop. We were only a little shop, but our shop was, was packed. People used to queue to get in and the other shops were all empty. So I think that didn't, didn't help, you know. I can remember most, a lot of the bands that used to come in our shop that were really unknown. You know, within two or three years, suddenly they were on the world stage. Um, in fact, just recently, I mean, Fleetwood Mac were the first band. It was Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac then. I used to love Peter Green's guitar playing, he was great. And um, he came from Bethnal Green, which is not far from the shop. And uh, he came into our shop once, and I was sort of in awe, you know, and the band. And anyway, they ordered a complete set of orange equipment. They were the first band to use it. Uh, and of course, then we went, there's lots of stories, but they went off to America and took our equipment with them and it launched it in America. Soon after that, Stevie Wonder used our equipment. He used to come into our studio and that was it, it exploded. 